All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We are here for another exciting episode of the PMA LCS. Here we've got uh, Popo's pecking order versus the long anime schlongs today, and we are already getting into champ select here. So let's get right down to it. And hey, what's up, guys? How's it going, OP? Ready for and another match. Indeed. Looks like uh, bands are just firing away. Popo's pecking order getting rid of Zareth, Shin, and Anivia. Uh, long anime songs not wanting to see Zed, Shogath after that last game from StarCraft. Holy cow. And the J4 uh, pinching champion pool of both Minbung and Kiko yourself. And... Uh, the Zareth and the Anivia, I find that interesting. Starting with the Morgana first pick, probably for Super, com uh, super Combi Guru now, but uh, I like the flex options in the first pick like that. Yeah, definitely. You know, it is a flex. I, I, yeah, I would agree it's going probably to our Super Combi Guru because we know that Kiko Fuck Yourself definitely likes to play more aggressive style champions in the mid lane. Um, so. We'll have to see how the long animation longs kind of counter that or uh, react to it, knowing that it can be a flex pick. I'm I'm seeing a trundle here, maybe maybe picking up a jungler like a Warwick. Nami, the Nami okay, coming in. Their bottom All right. Lane. I don't really see Nami as a great answer to Morgana personally, but um, interesting to go for it. I guess they could pick up the rest of their bottom lane and go with something like Caitlyn here, maybe. Yeah, I mean that's or Caitlyn's the, a very safe Ezreal. pick. The, the Ezreal's really strong too right now. Yeah, definitely a ton of poke there with a, a Nami Ezreal coming in. I do think Nami can be pretty good into Morgana. There's yep, the there's the Ezreal. Yeah. Just... Uh, yeah, the double tier build is really strong right now. So this inclines me to believe that they go... Yeah, there's the Kate. The other side of that, not yet. Oh, hey, the Ooh, Trundle. The trundle. just talked about that. <laughs> Picking it away from the potential for General Dill. Uh, uh, already two mid lane bans here. To me, I think they should grab a mid laner before his pool gets pinched even like even more intensely yeah i mean hiramar definitely has his known champions um but i think even on those champions where he may not have you know you know all the mastery seven on or anything like that i think he's still a really well-rounded overall player so um For sure. i don't know i mean I guess a mid lane would probably be good just because General Dill is also very strong, very well rounded uh, as well. So even yeah, if they ban him out. Yeah, plenty of jungler yeah. options open too, I feel like. Maybe the Warwick here wouldn't be bad. We are the youngsters being spammed in the chat. Ooh, the Camille coming in. Hmm. I'm assuming I, more know, than likely for General Dill, but no, I, think I have seen Neil it in the, the jungle steel. recently, so... I, I think that's for Neil the Steel. I, I doubt that's for General Dill. But man, in that in the top lane, that if, if, if Camille ends up going there, the Comet on Camille, early game, just so much pressure and so much damage coming out just from that alone i also know that both minbung and starcraft play this trundle so that is also a flex pick so i like that we have the double flex picks coming out really making it to where this what to go with for this fourth pick for the long anime songs is a little bit more a uh, little bit scarier and that so they get rid of the orn and the zigs yeah, Zig's a big champion from Hiramar. Does play it quite a lot. Super, super range. Just sit back and poke. 
A classic Greg champ as well. Oh, for sure. Hmm. But yeah, I mean, if if long enemy schlongs want to hold off, they can pick, you know, well, whether Camille goes jungle or top, they can pick either of those and then leave the mid lane pick for last so they can kind of see, you know, get that counter pick in the mid lane should they choose to do that as well. And they get rid of the Nasus too, really doubling down, saying that this is obviously a trundle jungle. Uh, we're going to get rid of your other potential top line picks. Yeah, and Nass is just so strong just because, you know, even gets pushed back in lane, just farm with the Q, and then team fight late game. Still great. You know, Honestly, pop a carry. I'm not a big Nasus fan. I, I think Nasus is a a bad champion in, um, in the majority of cases. Uh, finishing off with an Oriana band. I've never seen Hiramar play that, to be honest. Hmm. Oh, and then they pick oh, up the cane. Locks in the cane. So now we know where this Camille and this cane are going. Really odd that they would... Hmm. And I guess maybe... It, it was assumed that the Camille was going top, not wanting to do the flex at all. But, yeah, the cane is really interesting. I, the trundle. I would honestly think, uh, and I don't, I can't say I know the matchup too well because I don't play Camille as much, but I would think Camille with her, you know, kit should be almost all right into trundle, especially early, because you can pack on the damage you have mobility as well. So I would think that would even do fine if the Trundle should go top, which I don't think it will. Uh, and now we see a Scion coming out as well. So more than likely, I'm thinking that still Trundle in the jungle. I've got some, uh, I mean, definitely Trundle in the jungle confirmed at this point uh, with the Scion pick. I've got my worries, honestly. I'm really liking Popo. Popo's pecking order, uh, their comp is really shaking out. With the Echo to finish it out, I'm a big fan of this composition. Lots of wave clear, lots of crowd control, really consistent engage. The, the Caitlyn gives a really nice siege potential with both between the traps and the long range autos and the zoning between the pillar and the uh, just the, the beefiness of the scion that really rounds mm -hmm. out this comp. I, I also like the, uh, they can easily go 1-4 if they get ahead. Echo can sit in a side lane against any of those champions if he's doing well. Well, really going to be interesting to see what Long Anime Slong's answers with to round out their composition. They're looking really squishy right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Definitely in comparison with a Trundle and Scion on the other side. Timo. Ooh. Ooh. Um... Okay, I'm All as right. much as a I'm... fan of a Teemo as I am, that's uh, an interesting one. I'm pretty surprised. I mean, let's think about this composition. What are its strengths? Hmm. If they, I mean, if they get a little bit ahead early, they can keep going with it, but like, and they can keep rolling because it's a cane and a Camille. So, I mean, those two, if they get ahead, are, do a million damage. Um, okay, the team is but... great in the side lane if he's snowballing. Like, there's that, for sure. But I, I feel like they almost have to snowball. They've pigeon them, pigeonholed themselves into a one-dimensional composition with no real tank line. So I go. Uh, they could 1-3-1, one, one, and... Especially, you know, if if the game is close, items are even. Camille can duel uh, Echo if any even items. Teemo can duel Trundle or Scion in side lane. Uh, if they can actually get vision and create space, you know, Ezreal, Nami, Kane, which is hopefully going to be Red Kane, you know, that's, that's a pretty safe trio. Yeah. Uh, uh 
Uh, if he better have the BMO skin. That's all I gotta say about it. You know, General Dill's all about, you know, skins win the game. So it, if there is no BMO skin, then they lose. That's predictions right there. Because that BMO skin is absolutely adorable. I bought it instantaneously. I haven't seen it in game yet. Who dares defy my will? But I mean, I, just, I don't know how. I feel like Teemo wouldn't do well into Echo. Just because I mean, you. You'd be able to poke him out, right? I guess. Well, but the thing with Echo is you're just using your Q early to wave clear, anyways. Like, yes, your farming might fall a little bit behind, but even as an Echo, you're still super strong, so it's you just try and stay out of the way, like, stay away from the Teemo, you wave clear with your Q, I, you think you're usually fine. I guess he's gonna but... get punished, like, levels 1 through 5 pretty hard, May, maybe even up to his first item, it could be pretty brutal, but... Because, I mean, honestly, I think level 2, Echo can do fine if he hits, you know, gets that the 3 procs on to Teemo, which just does so much damage to a squishy Teemo. But, I mean, I think at 6, Echo's going to have some issues, because then you're just going to get a bunch of shrooms in lane, and you try and run around or dash around to get to Teemo at that point. And you're just running through shrooms that are doing a ton of damage to you. I think that's when it becomes a real problem. But I mean, Teemo gets the jump on on Echo with that ignite. Could spell trouble. It really could go either way, I guess. I mean, Echo definitely has the ability to burst the Teemo once he has enough items. Um, but I feel like Teemo will always have the range advantage. As far as the top lane, though, I, I feel like the Scion is actually really favored in the early game, even up to maybe one or two items for the Camille. Yeah, most definitely. The Just the, the Comet there. And I, I feel like that's you have to go that build, or you have to go that, and it, but it's just so much, so much poke. And then, as for this bottom lane, uh, it's an interesting one. I, it can definitely go either way. The, the fact that Zorpox has the sustain on the Nami means that he could, uh, you know, play the long game against the Morgana, try to take less extended trades, you know, just try never to get hit with a snare. Obviously, easier said than done, but... Uh, there's a lot of poke between the Caitlyn and Morgana, but there's a lot of safety in the Nami and Ezreal. Mm -hmm. Most definitely, I, I think yeah. it's definitely favored for uh, Popo's pecking order, their bottom lane as well. Yeah, I would definitely agree. Like you said, one snare, I think, onto not... Although, Morgana's going exhaust and not it going ignite whereas nami is going ignite so i think that's a huge pressure thing but if, if morgana had ignite i think you land one q onto like nami and then you ignite i think she's just dead there's no chance but with the exhaust i think that gives a little bit more of the early pressure over to the side of no, the long no, and long switched over to exhaust at last at the last moment huh okay <laughs> Yeah, I mean, exhaust, exhaust the Caitlyn. Exhaust on exhaust. Then I'd... Yeah. Then I would give it back, yeah. Uh, Echo is a pretty good exhaust target as well. I mean, so in some ways, in the late game, I feel like maybe Poco, Popo's pecking order is lacking damage. Um, you know, obviously, they have a lot more crowd control. They have a lot more utility uh, than long NMH longs. But that potentially could be lacking damage. It's just such a squishy composition coming mm -hmm. out of long NMH longs. That's, that's really my main concern throughout the entire game. 
I'm kind of interested in how Hiromar builds because I'm a huge fan of. I I, I love playing Teemo, um, and I'm a huge fan of the on hit build. But I know just the pure damage of having the full AP Teemo is great. But I mean, if you're going into a, a Scion and a Trundle, I don't know. You you might. It's possible that you want to switch that up, but we'll see. I mean, it's it's a pretty scary likely. world for a Teemo to be in when he has literally <laughs> no front line. You know, he's got no tanks in front of him at all. Like, going straight AP is definitely a dangerous world. I feel like Leandre's is a must buy, though. Yeah, just to try and do the that extra damage there. Yeah, I think that'll maybe be a, that'll he goes be a good like call. some sort of mana regen item, I guess, in Dubliandri's. Maybe he goes straight AP. That that's what I hope he does is just like Morella Namicon in Dubliandri's. That'd be that'd be great. Because I mean, that could be a big thing in fights if you know, as soon as you know, you get a, a Trundle, a Scion, an Echo, you know, running in to dive your team, you get that extra slow. That could be oh, with huge. the Rylas, yeah. Could well, be. even with just a Teemo Shroom, that uh, could just sure. be huge in kiting them out. Because, I mean, if you, other than Nami, everybody... Well, I guess and Teemo. But uh, other than Nami, everybody on the team has kind of like a... Uh, has an escape, essentially. Like, Kane goes through a wall, dash over the wall. Camille can dash over a wall. Ezreal's got his dash as well, I mean... There's a bunch of escape potential and kite back potential, which is what they're gonna have to do once you start getting to these team fights, um, and that's where I think the team of shrooms are gonna come into play really well, because you kite back, they take a bunch of team of shroom damage. You kite back, they take a bunch of team of shroom damage, and suddenly the fight's in your favor, and then you just re-engage. And with Camille, and you're gonna be trying to lock down that yeah. Caitlyn. Yeah, uh, I get what you're saying. That's, that's kind of optimistic because then you, you have to make sure that you're fighting around the Teemo Shrooms or in in areas in which you can actually make that happen consistently. All right, he's got the Bemo skin. They win. It's over. It's over. Game Game's done. FF. But yeah, I mean... That is adorable. Holy cow. Pretty overpowered. Hmm. All right, but let's get the these predictions in the chat here. Hashtag POP win or hashtag LAS win. Let's see. What does everybody think? I mean, obviously, we have our predictions because, I, like I said, BMO skin equals win. Just like, just like Dylan said. Oh, uh, that's... I'm gonna have to contradict the the belief there. I'm gonna go with. I'm I'm gonna go with the Popo's pecking order. I think their composition's really strong. So we got it split here. So chat, we need you to decide this for us. Cut the tie. And it looks like the long enemy schlongs are looking to go through mid lane here. With all those pings coming out. Running as a five man group. But so is Popo's pecking order, so Um yeah. I feel like the team with the Morgana is favored. Caitlin's Ooh. also pretty good level. Ooh, one. they're running up. They know Oh, oh no. the binding lands. Going for the pop up. Lots of damage traded back and forth. Neil the Steel flashing out. The ignite ticking away, flashing forward, looking for the the heal oh. coming out, but the flash forward and see the kind of guru. Another ignite gonna tick away, heal coming out, trying to save him. Starcraft falls to the turret. Flash forward from General Dill, he wants this. <laughs> Picks up Super Kami Guru, but dies in the process. Sorpox trying to limp away from Starcraft's die decaying body water level one. The cow. <laughs> oh, but, that was uh, let's let's think about the aftermath. I suppose at this point, uh, lots of summoners used. <laughs> Sorry, stream lag. But yeah, so we we've got bunch of summoners burned.
two kills on each side. We've got both of the top laners with a kill. Super Kami Guru coming up with a, that first blood, and then Tebow comes up with a kill as well in the mid lane there, so. Really nice. My scoreboard. So yeah, it looks like both bot top laners went back and they, they bought boots off of that. Super Kami Guru came out with the refillable potions. All right, we're gonna pause this here for a second. Cause we're getting apparently a lot of lag. Like I said, I don't stream a lot, so we're working on it. So Ali, I paused here at 2.15. We're gonna let it, it roll for a second. All right, you're at 2.15. We're just gonna let it hold out for a minute. Okay, so at two fit, let's see. We've got a red start straight into wolves. And then Blue Star Wolves Raptors coming out from uh, Neil the Steel. Both pathing towards topside. General Dill has his flash down, so that's definitely a uh, big consideration for Min Mung right now. All right, we're going to start the stream in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Yeah, definitely a big thing for um, Minbung to think about would be pathing top, uh, which is why I imagine Neil the Steel is also pathing towards that side, trying to be defensive for his top laner. All right, both junglers at their top side buffs. Not much of a CS different really around the board. Pretty pretty similar. Both AD carries, mid laners the same. Yeah, they should run into each other here at this scuttle crab. Neil is still barely gonna pick it up. Looking for a fight though. Uh, Neil still just gonna come back through the wall, feeling just gonna dash over. Nothing gonna happen. Feeling good about the fact that he got the scuttle crab. Not a whole lot going on so far. Is it any better? Anybody? No? Aggressive play happening in the top line. General Dill trying to get out of this one. Neil the Steel still corralling Starcraft and Minbung into this corner. Minbung starting up the camp and smiting it for the health. General Dill dashing forward, gonna pick up the kill. Starcraft trying to get the return kill, picking up the double buffs. Neil the Steel looking, dodging the knockup, trying to pick up the kill, and Starcraft gonna get it. And that's a two for one. Neil is Steel feeling really good about that as well because he gets a lot of those uh, charges for his red cane. Red darken thing. Yeah, bottom lane looking pretty passive so far, though. Not much going on. Same with mid, just a bit of trading. Pressure kind of going towards, uh... You go fuck yourself in the early game. We're gonna try this. See if that fixes anything. Minbum looking for a bit of an invade here. 
Still only level three. Neil the Steel is level four. Gonna see him at Wolves. Super Kami Guru now is in the area as well. Just gonna push him out of his jungle. Get a little bit of control, but gonna be really sad that you know he's not getting any camps at all right here. Gonna have to walk all the way back. About a thousand gold leads so far for long animation long. Binding gonna land in the bottom lane, but shouldn't amount to much. Shut up, trap kind of underneath. A lot of bursts coming through, forcing the heal out for digital love. That early game pressure coming out of the Morgana that we talked about. Still having issues, OP? Apparently. Got an ult there in the mid lane to s try and stay alive here. Mar with barely Lashing any health. forward. Gonna get the kill on to Kiermar. Neil and Steel just backing away. Kiko, fuck yourself playing a strong game on this Echo so far. Uh, what time are you at, OP? Uh, 6.47. Okay, I'm 49. gonna if you. if you want. Yeah, so far, a pretty even game. Yes, working and on it. like we called out, the Leandri start for Teemo. <laughs> I like that build quite a bit, actually. Um, Binding gonna land in the bottom lane. Not gonna amount to much. The love just gonna arcane shift away. And now the shrooms starting to come out like we talked about. Oh, teleport in the bottom lane. General Dill looking for Super Comic Guru. Gonna force the flash, ulting onto Jabberman Kurtz. But here comes Neil the Steel, gonna get exhausted. Super Kami Guru gonna fall, but there's gonna be a trade kill onto Neil the Steel for Jabberman Man Kurtz. Four in the bottom lane and only a one for one. Feels pretty bad as uh, Minbung's here, just gonna look for some aggressive trading in the mid lane as well. A lot of fighting. Hiramar forcing out the ult for Kiko. Fuck yourself, but yeah. Starker have feeling pretty good about that overall, just getting to push in some waves. Neil the Steel looking top right now, but just gonna walk away. Looks like uh, Super Kami Guru is looking mid. Neil the Steel's staying around this area though. Coming up behind. Gonna use the ultimate on Hiramar. Hiramar has no flash, the root lands, but he's looking for the trade kill. The ignite ticking, gonna get the trade kill back. Feels bad, man. 
died with his ultimate up. A nice play, nice turn from here, Mar though. Neil the Steel on a pink ward starting up this Mountain Drake. 